my name is Mr. Ishengoma and we are here again to continue with transformation remember on our previous class we looked at the four main basic transformations today we are going to see how do we carry on these transformations remember we have two things we have to do when we are dealing with transformations one we can draw right in order to draw we have to consider first the grid two the steps which we have to follow under each independent uh, transformation but apart from drawing we can describe to describe is to explain how the object became the image this means for example you are given the object and the same time you are given the image so your job is to tell us one what transformation was carried out two what steps under the given transformation that was used for example if it is reflection you have to tell us the mirror line in other words if it is a translation you have to tell us about uh, the column vectors taken now here we have got our practical questions that are mixed let's look at number one describe fully the single transformation that maps shapes a into shape b now today we are going to mainly use what we call a tracing paper what does a tracing paper help us when you have a tracing paper step one draw object on the tracing paper after drawing the object step two you can flip over flip over the tracing paper onto the image and if you flip over and it enters properly we shall understand that is a reflection or if you don't flip over then you can just slide if you just slide and it enters on the image it will tell us that is a translation or the third part you can slide to the object and when you see it is not a translation then you rotate the tracing paper on top of the image if you rotate and it can enter it means that is a rotation for the case of enlargement we don't need a tracing paper because if image and object are of different size automatically that will be enlargement situation now let's get our tracing paper we get our object and remember shape a is the object we have to put it into shape b so if you look closely this is our shape a here if you look closely that is our shape a so when you have shape a this is shape a we can draw our shape a on top of our tracing paper like that step one we said you flip over to see if this is a reflection 
When I flip over the tracing paper like that, it will never join. Meaning, this is not a reflection. Take it back to the object. The next testing is you slide, you slide. When you slide it and it can enter properly like that, we conclude that this was a translation. So now we have concluded using the idea of a tracing paper that this is a translation. But we know, when you know it is a translation, you have to tell us how many steps you moved on the X and how many steps you moved on the Y to move from the object till the image. So you can choose one corner to represent this. I'm choosing this corner there. We shall count the X steps. One, two, three, four. So we have four steps on the right and then one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six steps up. So here we have four steps right and then we have six steps up. In other words, we can choose to write four, six. Let's go to example two. Here is our second question. The question says, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle Q. Now we have two triangles here. This is P and this is Q. So triangle P is our object, triangle Q is our image. As we said, we get the help of a tracing paper draw the object on the tracing paper ah. we can flip over the tracing paper but it will never enter so if it doesn't enter meaning this is not a reflection take it back flip it back to the image to the object then slide it to the image when you slide it does not enter meaning also this is not a translation now once you reach there after sliding start rotating while you are at the object so when you rotate your tracing paper and it enters clearly it means it is a rotation so we shall write here that this is rotation after we need to know what will be our center in order to get our center, we need to bring back our tracing paper and we do try and improvement method. Now, if this is my object, if I pinch here, if I pinch there and I rotate my tracing paper, will my, my, no, it will never reach, meaning this is not my proper center. I go back. When I go back, I try another center perhaps I can try this center here there if I try this center and I rotate 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 uh, no it has not entered I go back I try another center because I'm doing try and error I go to the next point there I rotate again yes my shape has entered properly so it means if the shape was here and if i pinch at this position this object will become that image meaning this is my center so if this is my center here i have to know what are the coordinates for my center but my center is clearly if you look at this is y-axis this is exactly zero zero so we get our center as zero zero then after that we have to find out the angle to find the angle i bring back my tracing paper right when i bring back my tracing paper i stand on my found out center then i draw an arrow there at my center i pinch again 
and now I find out how much angle will I move from the object the arrow I look at the arrow I look at the arrow and my arrow has moved from this position and now it is on this position it shows it moved an angle of 90 degrees but anti-clockwise direction so we shall say 90 degrees anti-clockwise but b on the grid translate triangle p three squares to the right and five squares up so i have to translate this three squares to the right if i take this corner one two three to the right and then five steps up one two three four five meaning i get that position i will do the same to the remaining corners this one one two three one two three four five and the last one this corner one two three one two three four five now i have translated my object p to this current position here so this will be now my new image now let's go to example three there we go we have our question three here what is question three telling us to do when you look at question three properly you can realize we have two shapes which look like p and the question says describe fully the single transformation that maps shape a onto shape b from a to b with my naked eyes i can see this p is facing this side and this p is facing that side it means there was a flip over and if there is a flip over this is clearly a refraction then after knowing this is a refraction we need to know where the mirror line is so if this is the corner and this is its original corner here we have one two three four five six steps in the middle meaning the mirror will be on the middle position that would be the three steps and if you check the other corner as well one two three four five six meaning the mirror line will be on the middle position hence our mirror line would pass on this position touching our value negative 2 of the x reading so our equation of the mirror line will be x is equal to negative 2 but b on the grid rotate shape a 90 clockwise about 0 0 so in order for me to rotate it easily i can get this corner get that corner and this corner and that corner on the and then i put my origin as the arrow so i have to move 90 clockwise so i move the arrow i move the arrow i move the arrow 90 my arrow will be facing the east to indicate 90 so i will look at the tracing paper my corner will be there I can now draw it below my other corner is here my another corner is there and the other two corners are here so it will be now easy for me to draw the image having got the important corners as you can see there in the circle in the center so that is the image position let's look at the last example number four we have got shape s as you can see it there shape s and we are told enlarge shape s with the scale factor half and the center one three first of all we have to know where is our center one three 
Our center one three is here. One three. This is our center one three. Don't forget. And then the scale factor is half. So first, let's get all the steps of the corners from our center. So from this original center, what will be the movement for this corner? It will be one, two, three, four to the right, then one, two, two to the up. So if this corner I multiply to my scale factor, I will get four times a half two, two times a half one, meaning from the same center, I will go one, two, and one. So this corner is now here on the image. So from the same center, I will get another corner. One, two, three, four, negative one, negative two. Four steps to the right, two steps to the down. So again, I will multiply them by a half because half is my scale factor. Four times a half, two. Negative two times a half, I get negative one. So this image, I will again go back to the starting center and I move the same steps. Two steps to the right, one steps to the down. So this corner has now come here. Now let's find this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and zero because there is no steps up, no steps down. So I multiply again by half. Six times half, three. Zero times half, zero. So meaning from the original center, I will go one, two, three steps, zero. I'm left with this one corner. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, one and two. So six steps right, two steps up. Again, I multiply with my scale factor. Six times half, three. Two times half, one. So again, from my starting point, which was the original center, I will move three steps right, one step up. Hence, I have concluded all the corners of the original object. And now, I can join the corners so that I obtain my image. Thank you for watching. My name is Mr. Ishengoma.